Greetings, folks. This is Joseph A. Sabora, and guess what? Star Wars The Force Awakens is coming out this Friday, and I'm actually lining up to go see it on opening night. I just can't wait to, to finally get to see some of the original characters from Star Wars again, not to mention some new characters that's going to finally uh, join in. And this is the, the Star Wars cup from Subway. Yep, right there. And it has a picture of the newly designed Stormtrooper. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually collect all the cups at Subway. Yeah. So definitely go out and pick it up for yourself. So anyway, I'm going to start reviewing some Star Wars um, specials and movies. At this rate, I think I'm just going to do uh, the trilogy and maybe one special, which uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. And if, if I'm lucky, I might be able to review uh, the prequels, but we'll see. I mean, if who knows uh, how long would I take, but if I wind up taking this long, then... Like, if I want to uh, continue to do some more, like, during December, or even January for that matter, I'll try to do that. <clears throat> but either way, I'm going to see what I can do. So I'm going to start with one special that came out on November 17, 1978. Because, let's face it, since we're already in the holiday season already, why not just review this one holiday special which sad to say was a true embarrassment yes I'm talking about the infamous Star Wars the holiday special or simply the Star Wars holiday special or Star Wars holiday special which way you call it but <laughs> anyway this was a special that I'm surprised I never even heard of as a Star Wars fan, I always grew up with the original trilogy. The ones that uh, my father had showed me ever since I was a little kid. I mean, I started watching it on TV. We later had it on VHS. Um, we had the, the whole uh, trilogy, so we get to watch it any time. I later went on to see uh, Star Wars, uh, all three of them, but as special editions back in 1997. So it was like the first time I ever saw Star Wars on the big screen in theaters. So it was exciting. Yeah, even though they did add some new scenes and, and some CGI effects in the mix. Even though some were okay. But other times, you know, they were unnecessary. But that's where it started the whole... Uh, changing of the trilogy from George Lucas himself. Anyway, this special has been heard from conventions out there as well as uh, you know the internet, yeah, which includes um, torrents, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, you know, bootleg DVDs that they made. Um, wow. And not to mention an episode of The Late Night with Conan O'Brien which I actually watched, by the way. Uh, I remember watching an episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien where Harrison Ford was uh, had a guest appearance, mostly because he was promoting for the film Firewall. And Conan O'Brien actually had showed him a clip of Star Wars Holiday Special, which they just show him as Han Solo, um, uh, already uh, saving the... Chewbacca's family from the stormtrooper, so he finally came in and and he was helping out and, and he was getting ready for uh, life day, which that's what they're preparing for. Wow! And after seeing that clip, now I'm really curious enough to see this, the entire thing, and I did. I only saw it a few times. Pretty sad, isn't it? A few times already. <clears throat> In fact, I even own the disc, but I also watched it recently on my Blu-ray player, 
at this rate I was watching it on YouTube the whole thing so well I'll tell you this in spite of how utterly boring it was there are a few segments I did love and I'm gonna get to that but the rest of them is just painful just completely boring so it just makes you wonder how much drugs that the producers had done yet alone the actors yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really sad because, you know, you want to see all your favorite Star Wars uh, characters actually do something, you know, get to fight, uh, you know, the Stormtroopers, uh, you know, the Star Destroyers, and anything, and plus get to stop um, Darth Vader. I mean, that, that's exactly what you want to see. I mean, after the first movie, because it was very popular. And I guess the, the main reason why they had this holiday special, because why not? I mean, if a movie like uh, Star Wars, which became a mega hit uh, back in 1977, then why not uh, create a holiday special, you know, like all the other holiday specials that we had? I mean, Charlie Brown had one, uh, and so was, um, you know, uh, all the Rack and Bass ones. So I guess maybe Star Wars was was lucky enough to have one, but... It's too bad though because the whole special just turns out into a, a really bad variety show. Like, if you thought the Brady Bunch Variety Hour was bad, wait till you see this. I mean, yeah, because that's all you pretty much see. It's like, all you see is, is uh, the original cast from Star Wars doing basically nothing. Yeah, not getting enough screen time, and you know exactly what was going to happen next. While the rest of the special is just nothing but Chewbacca's family. Because they get plenty of screen time. They're just going around, you know, the Wookiee family's just going around making all these Wookiee noises. While you have actors like um, Art Carney, Bea Arthur, and even Harvey Corman making, you know, actually doing free characters doing some weird shit. I mean, god damn it, man. <clears throat> and it had some music and all this other stuff in the mix, so there you have it. So anyway, uh, let's get to this uh, awful special. It stars Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Peter Mayhew, Anthony Daniels, Art Carney, Kenny Baker, Bea Arfer, Don Frankis, Harvey Corman, and James Earl Jones. It's written by Pat Prof. Hard to believe. That's the writer who went on to do uh, all the Naked Guns, uh, Airplane, and all the other films. Wow, I never thought he would he would take the credit for this. Leonard Rip, Bruce Belange. Uh, Rod Warren and Mitzi Welch and it's directed by Steve Binder with uh, David uh, Akamba given an uncredited uh, director's credit. The special begins starting on Life Day which is a holiday for Wookiees and others in the galaxy you know, sort of like Christmas, you know, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Boxing Day and all the other holidays woe into one you know, for, <laughs> for the galaxy far, far away. Anyway, Chewbacca, along with Han Solo, on their Millennium Falcon, is headed home to see his family. But along the way, the duo is being chased by two Star Destroyers, but they wind up escaping into hyperspace. So meanwhile, on somewhere in Kashyyyk, or which is referred to as Kasuk, I guess that's what it had to be called, uh, which is somewhere in a ginormous um, tree house, yeah, that looks almost like a, uh, a spaceship uh, of some sort. It was, it was uh, made out of uh, tree wood and all that. Chewbacca's family is preparing for his return, you know, getting ready to, to wait on him, you know, for, for the upcoming uh, Life Day uh, celebration. You know, basically, the family is just going around, you know, doing what they're doing best, you know, just, 
you know, you just have Lumpy, yeah, his son, who was a, you know, a young uh, Wookiee, you know, just playing around uh, with uh, his grandfather, um, Itchy. They're playing all these, uh, the Star Destroyer planes that they created and all this other stuff. You know, they're just, you know, fooling around. You know, then they were watching a video, which turned out to be a circus acrobatic show, which is similar to all the other circuses we've seen. Yeah. And then you even had, uh, you know, Lumpy actually uh, stealing one of those, uh, what seems to me looks more like uh, those peanut type cookies, even though he was telling them not to take one of those out of the bowl. You have to wait until dinner. <laughs> for its preparation so yeah so anyway he winds up going outside on top of the ledge of the treehouse you know yeah I'm surprised he didn't fall from one of them so that's that's really dangerous anyway hoping to find the Millennium Falcon his wife Mala wants a computer scan for the starships in the area but became completely unsuccessful so Mala wants of contacting uh, Luke Skywalker, who looks like a deranged Ken Dow, you know, with all that makeup that they put all over his face, even covers some of his scars and everything. It turns out that uh, actor Mark Hamill had a car accident uh, before he did the special, or maybe after, I don't know. But it happened during that time, and so they had to cover all that makeup. You know, all that scars that he had, he had tons of makeup, so that way you know, he would look just as good as he can be. But you know, it's pretty sad. So anyway, um, he was being contacted along with R2D2 while he was working on his X-wing starfighter. Luke had told her that he doesn't know what happened, so Mala contacts uh, a local human trader named Son Don, who's played by Art Carney. So. He tells her through a carefully worded message that Han and Chewbacca are on their way and should be arriving very soon. But Mala winds up attempting to prepare a meal, so he decided to give some instructions by watching a local cooking show by an eccentric four-armed alien cook named Chef Gomanda, which is played by Harvey Corman in a very strange uh, role that he actually played because he looks like the the stepmother from Cinderella yeah, the Disney version that is from 1950s animated classic um, but he almost sounds a little bit like Julia Child there yeah ba basically a Julia Child type of chef yeah I mean because already you know Mala is just preparing to cook all that food inside the cooking bowl using all the tools and everything and I know you couldn't forget that scene where he, where the the chef actually started doing this line stir whip stir whip 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 stir stir whip stir whip 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 stir stir whip stir whip 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 stir oh boy <laughs> that that is too much well I think he could do better than I am Son Don had arrived with all the life date gifts for everyone for the entire uh, Wookiee family, including um, a virtual reality fantasy program for Chewbacca's father, Itchy. Yep, which is basically a psychedelic uh, fantasy program that features Diane Carroll while she was singing the song This Minute Now, which uh, the virtual reality machine tells Itchy that she is his fantasy. He suggested it to invite him to experience her. I don't know. I mean, Diane Carroll is a great singer, but... And I guess maybe that's what they wanted to come up with, but... I swear to God, this is not something that, that kids out there who are huge Star Wars fans would watch. I mean, come on. Is this Star Wars? Or this is just, uh, porno? <clears throat> oh, boy. <laughs> well... I'll tell you one thing, it did give Itchy a boner. Okay, um, back to that. Um, on the Falcon, Chewbacca and Han are just come out, out of hyperspace, not far from Kashai. Han's noticed that the increased Imperial presence 
so they decided to land in an unguarded area to the north. But once they entered in the atmosphere, Lumpy started hearing the warning of the ship, only to find out that Han and Chewie might be arriving. You know, but as soon as Mala opens the door, it turns out that two stormtroopers and officers had arrived on the scene. <clears throat> so the Imperial forces on their way into the house, ordering a search party throughout the entire room for Chewbacca. And once they continue, Son, Don, and the others had attempted to distract them with food and using Mala's uh, music video box, which actually features a music video that in my opinion was really cool. I actually loved that video by um, Jefferson Starship called Light the Sky on Fire, which um, it's a 3D music video that was actually watched by one of the Imperial Guards. And actually, it was a really cool music video. It had uh, the lead singer uh, actually singing onto a lightsaber microphone, and then you see uh, all the other uh, players in the background, you know, where the the guitar and yeah, as well as the drums and everything were all all light up like that. It was really cool. I actually liked that one. Uh, so anyway, uh, after they they finished watching it. Um, the head officer orders to s the search to continue, so then the head officer tells Mala to keep Lumpy busy while they search his room. So Lumpy winds up uh, watching a cartoon on the view screen on one of Father's many adventures. And now this cartoon, I would say, was also the main reason to watch this. Because I think, despite of how cheesy it looks, I thought the, the cartoon was actually entertaining. I mean, because after all, this was the um, the first cartoon that introduced us to probably one of the most popular characters in the Star Wars universe. That's right, a body hunter named Boba Fett. And you know what? I love Boba Fett. He's a cool character. He may be overrated, but I think he's one of the the finest characters in the universe. However, I wish they had done better with the characters, so they look like crap. But, well, anyway, the cartoon was actually done by Novanda Limited, which would later had done some of the other uh, Star Wars uh, spin-off cartoons, like the Ewoks, for instance. Yeah, hard to believe, but it's the same company. It's a Canadian uh, production company. Anyway, the cartoon shows Luke, Han, and Leia first encounter with Boba Fett, so during the search for the Talesmen, the Millennium Falcon crash onto a water planet known as Panna. But upon their landing, they run into Fett, who claimed that he wanted to help after saving Luke from a giant monster. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, an eating uh, dinosaur type of one. That attacks them from behind. So they all boarded um, the Falcon where Han is being infected by a mysterious sleeping virus caused by the Talesmen. So then suddenly Luke had contact the virus as well. So then Fed and Chewie decide to go to Panna City to get the cure. And once they try to get into the Imperial occupied city, Fed instructs Chewie to stay behind while he gets the cure. Once away from Chewie, Fed contacts Darth Vader, you know, just to see, you know, what's going on because it seems to me like they're actually gonna plan on an attack on them. So on the Falcon, as C-3PO has caring for Han and Luke, R2-D2 intercepts the call between Vader and Fett, causing a worry for C-3PO. So invading the Imperials, Fett and Chewie return to the Falcon with the cure after everyone recovers from the virus. Yeah, this is where, he's, where uh, Han says, What happened? Oh boy, and Han Solo looks like something out of uh, Brock from... Pokemon, yeah, meaning that his eyes is always closed all the time. I mean, what the hell? I mean, Jesus, I mean, he hardly opens his eyes. I mean, he's not blind. Come on, I've, I've seen the uh, Han Solo the way he is. Not to mention they had uh, Luke Skywalker in large baby blue eyes. Yeah, even the... God, even Leia looks awful. I mean, what the hell? And they could have done a little better with C-3PO and R2-D2, but I think they were okay. Anyway, after they recovered, they learned that Fred's uh, true 
Allegiance, which Fred actually blasts away from his jet pack, promising that they will meet again. So everyone then escapes from the planet and back to the rebel base on the board the Falcon. So when that's finished, Lumpy had worked to create a translation device from his Amorphian machine that would fool the Imperials into returning to their base by faking the commander's voice. But to do so, um, he first must watch the manual for the device by presenting a malfunction and competent robot, yeah, played by Harvey Corman, yeah, giving all these uh, robotic uh, moves that he's that he actually has done. Although they probably had done a lot of editing when they did that scene. Yeah, he was like doing that that tongue thing like this, and and all this. All these robot uh, moves like there, and and he also talks uh, very strange too. Until you know his voice starts to uh, you know become you know very deeper and deeper and deeper. Like they use all these sound effects to to alter his voice like this, and yeah, he was even going down like this. Ugh. Ugh. What the hell? I mean, basically, it was an instruction manual. Is that supposed to be funny? I mean, I, I don't know if I'm laughing or I'm just bored. <laughs> but, God damn it, Harvey Corman, you deserve better than this. I mean, you're a funny comedian. You know, you, you act, after all, you did play the <laughs> Gazoo in in the, the Flintstones. Yeah, you did the voice of them. And not to mention, you went on to do uh, the Carol Burnett show. I mean, you were funny then. What the hell? You get started in this mess? I mean, geez, you deserve better. Anyway, while the Imperials are searching downstairs, the living room blue screen activates, announcing that Tatooine is now being put under curfew by the Empire due to subversive forces. Yeah, this is where you see uh, Bea Arfur as a, uh, a bartender named Akmina, and that's where you see... Uh, Harvey Corman as uh, Quidman, you know, who just shows up, you know, since he's falling in love with her. Plus, you know, he was getting a drink while actually pouring, uh, you know, pouring a drink inside his head. Yeah, he has a hole in his head, you know, just a drink uh, from his brain. Wow. <laughs> it, it, it happened that the, um, the most easily cantina that that's where you feature all the monsters and including uh, Greedo. Yeah, it's, which unfortunately I'm I'm surprised he even showed up in the special because didn't Han Solo already shot him in the movie? I mean, what the hell? I know it doesn't make any sense, and unless it's one of his uh, cousins, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. They announced that all the Imperial forces um, to actually shut down. So part of the scene in the bar, Ackman approached to Meyer Kremen, an enormous alien who misunderstood something that she said to him the other night. So when the Empire announced that the Q3 was going to be shut down, Ackman announced a last drink, and when the creatures ignore her, she sang the song called Good Night, But Not Goodbye. Which, which was set to the Cantina band theme. You know, the Lumpy uses this opportunity to pull his plan into motion by faking a repeated call to the Imperials to return to base. And once they left, the head officer instructs them, one of the stormtroopers, to stay behind. But after the other Imperials leave, the stormtrooper still hears the repeated signal and realizes that they were tricked. So then he found Lumpy and destroyed the machine. He then chases Lumpier outside, and as they both run onto deck, Han and Chewie have arrived to the rescue. Yeah, and then finally, he stopped one of the stormtroopers just as, get this, he trips over his gun and actually crashes into the ledge and fell. And this is where you hear the William scream. Ah! <laughs> yeah, and Han almost fell too. So then Han had finally arrived um, and trying to greet the, the Chewbacca family that all the stormtroopers are gone. So now, you know, 
Chewbacca says goodbye to Han and stay with his family. So after Chewie protects Lumpy, just when Han had dispatched the stormtrooper and got killed, they reunited with everyone, you know, just just to be safe. While an Imperial officer had appeared on the view screen, giving a general alert for the missing stormtrooper, until Son Don had arrived and quickly says that the trooper has stole their food and their supplies and wants up being deserted. So the officer has said that they will send out a search party. So danger had averted, the family had prepared to go to the festival at the Tree of Life as a celebration. So suddenly the family is being seen in space, traveling towards a bright star. As they walk into it, they arrive at the Great Tree of Life where many Wookiees are dressed in red robes are gathered around. As Chewbacca takes the stage along with C-3PO, R2-D2, along with Luke, Leia, and Han. Leia winds up giving a short speech on the meaning of Life Day, and oh my god, here comes the pain. She sings a song in the celebration to the tune of the Star Wars theme actually missing a high note and I swear to God her singing is fucking horrible I mean it I mean god damn it I mean she sings really high that she might have been I swear to God she sings like she's high as a kite I swear to God I never want to see Carrie Fisher sing again after seeing this it's really painful and anyway at the conclusion of the ceremony, Chewbacca remembers his adventures, which just shows archive footages from Star Wars, as we know it, um, and promises that he will somehow come back to Luke, Han, Leia, R2-D2, and C-3PO together as a team, which they will in the later sequels of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So then, that night, the Wookiee family had sat around the feast table, celebrating the day, and being back together again. Just like all families should. And it ends. Oh boy. Oh, what I have to say that I already couldn't say already. The special is horrible, terrible, painful, forced, and completely boring. I mean, that's pretty much what you see in the special. You never get enough screen time for the Star Wars characters. It, that That's really painful. I mean, not even Chewbacca gets to do anything. That sucks. All this special really is, is just Chewbacca's family going around doing what they do best. Just fool around while preparing for Life Day. Until they get treated with segments after segments after segments. That are just fucking horrible, except for maybe a few. Yeah, like the music video, the cartoon, and even the the cantina scene. Uh, well, <laughs> the stormtroopers and the officers came by to have a search party, knowing that they're going to be attacked just as soon as they arrive. And oh god, this is just awful. And it, and it is a true embarrassment for all of the entire cast. I mean, e even uh, Darth Vader only gets an archive footage, but I guess he was pretty lucky. He didn't, you know, get to do, um, you know, anything in, in the special. Like, I mean, the whole special was shot in videotape form. So they're just getting, like, archive footages of him and all the rest from uh, the cartoon and the Star Wars film. So that that's all it came from, and it's just... Awful. I mean, they. I mean, all you see is, uh, you know, Han Solo. You know, he's played by Harrison Ford, looking completely bored and stiff. You see uh, Luke Skywalker, in a very bad makeup job of his, and you know, he's played by Mark Hamill, of course, working with R two D two on the jet fire wing, until suddenly, you know, R two D two actually hits the the smoke machine and. <laughs> There you go. And then you have uh, Princess Leia, who's played by Carrie Fisher, you know, just standing there, you know, along with C-3PO, just to greet them to see what's going on. And and then at the next, once they arrive at the Tree of Life, you know, he gives she gives a short speech, and then she winds up singing, 
you know, as high as a kite. It, it's just really an embarrassment. I, I, I just can't believe it. I, I just can't believe the whole thing got made. It wasn't worth it. And I only saw it a few times already. Unbelievable. The Star Wars commercials with uh, all these action figures, including the Millennium Falcon and the rest of the characters, that was uh, manufactured by Kenner, which is owned by Hasbro. I'd rather watch the commercials than the rest of, of the entire special. I think it's more entertaining than that. And, and how dare CBS for preempting two great shows like Wonder Woman and The Incredible Hulk. Seriously, couldn't they have picked a better day than than Sunday? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't born when it came out, but but looking at it, now I feel sorry for them. Boy, I, I can't believe that, that they got the director to do um, a stupid special like this, and I know you know, George Lucas didn't do this. Um, I mean, he, he was the producer for this, but... But, God damn it. I mean, no wonder he hated the special so much. I mean, he wanted to destroy it by using a sledgehammer in his own words. So, yeah, but it's already spreading already, Lucas. Why couldn't you destroy it then? Well, I guess he didn't want to take the risk, because, after all, the cartoon was included, so... And the cartoon winds up being on the, uh, the 2011 Blu-ray uh, box set of Star Wars. You know, the complete series, so... I guess that's saying a lot. But I'm surprised they didn't put the entire holiday special as part of the box set, so... <laughs> Could have been worse. But hey, you know, he still hasn't given us um, the original uh, Unaltered Trilogy on the Blu-ray box set, so that sucks. Because, unfortunately, I still have the trilogies that I picked up uh, back in 2008. Yeah, which I'm going to get to. Because, I swear to God, th this special is fucking horrible. In fact, this is the special that Jar Jar Binks would have loved. Trust me, I think he would have loved this special completely. Yeah, he'll probably just be joking around, or actually telling them that, Oh, uh, is that who the Star Wars characters were? Oh, brother, this special sucks. Um, end of story. Um, yeah, it, as a uh, Star Wars fan, I'm, I'm really disappointed. I can't believe it. But now I know why this is becoming a cult favorite for everybody who has seen it. So now, I guess, let's say this. I mean, maybe this special would work on a drinking game. And it shows. So, <laughs> what a waste. And it's also a waste on other actors too, like uh, Bea Arthur, R. Carney, as well as Harvey Corman. I mean, th th those are legendary actors right there. What the hell? They get cast in this mess? These are better than that. Yeah, even Diane Carroll deserves better too. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, such a shame. So anyway, if you're a big fan of Star Wars, Avoid the special at all costs, unless you're willing to take the risk to watch it during the holidays because it's really unpleasant to sit through. Hey, I mean, unless you want to watch it just for the cartoon, then take it for what it's worth. So anyway, it's without a doubt one of the worst holiday specials ever. And I mean it. So, I get the so-called Star Wars holiday special zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and may the force be with you. Bye.